everyone, Emmy Lou here. Today I'm going to show you a Salvador Dali melted clock. So he was really famous for doing melted clocks and lots of different surreal objects. So I'm going to show you the board. This is my board that I use for the elephant. So if you look at the elephant video, we did an awesome elephant with loads of like long legs, not loads, but four long legs. He was Spanish and he's not alive anymore, but he was known for doing surreal artwork. So things that don't exist, so things that aren't real. So I know that this is real because I'm touching it and I can see it. But if you think of, if I was to make this into having a big leg and a big eye, then it's something from my mind. It's not something that's real. So this reminds me a little bit of dreams as well. So write that down if you can. Salvador Dali. Spanish he was and he was born 1904 and he died in 1989 so he's not alive anymore I'm going to show you what he looks like because he looks kind of funky he looks really fun that's his he had a cane with him that I think had his piece of artwork on the bottom on the top can't see what it is actually but his moustache curled up so it was really fun and this is roughly what we're going to be doing today but we're not going to be drawing all of it because there's a lot there so we're just going to be doing the melted clocks because they're really fun to use in a project so I'll just show you a few more bits so that's a picture so he just did strange pictures pictures that don't really make any sense like that doesn't really make much sense does it so he did pictures that were to do with things in the head almost this is what I did with a student looks awesome doesn't it that took about two hours so we can't do all of that, but we're going to do a little bit of it. So I want to show you melt, just melted clocks in general. Because we can use that in a project in school, or you can use it at home, you can use it in whatever you like. But it's fun to draw things that are melted. I'm just looking down because I think I trod on a pastel. <laughs> so we need a pencil, paper. I'm going to do it long ways, just so I can fit things in. So the first thing you need, really easy, you just want to do a line. So do a line across and if you see it's almost in the middle of your page and then you're just going to go da -da -da. really easy this is then down now to get the line straight put your pencil there and go in and you'll know that it's that it's straight a lot of people draw it this way their line but it's straight till you get to about there is fine and you want it the same angle as this so if you put your pencil there and go like that and then just use your eye and you know that that's the cube. It's a kind of a 3D cube. And then what we want to do is we want to, I'll just set up everything before we draw the clocks. So here, draw a line. Then this is a tree. So you're going to go up all the way to the top, all the way to the top. And this one, all the way to the top. And you want a branch. So we're going to do a branch coming from somewhere here. So you touch there and you can just do. Can you see mine's like a twirly branch? It's like a bit of a bit there, but then a long bit. Now, we're pretty much nearly there, even if you probably don't think so. We're going to rub this line out. So get your rubber. We don't, I won't rub that one much, but you can rub that one out. I mean, I probably will rub it out, actually, because otherwise it's hard for you to see, isn't it? Let's get your rubber. Rub that out. So now what I've done is you can see that the tree's in front of this cube. It's on the cube because I've rubbed that line out. So you can do that with a lot of things, and I'll show you as time goes on. Now we're going to do a horizon line. So just there. You probably wouldn't want to do that first, but I've done it now. <laughs> I'm just thinking we wanted to draw the clock, but it's okay because we can rub things out. Now let's do our first clock. So we're going to do this. You're going to touch about there and you're going to go, think about, it's like a C for cat or a capital, a tummy of a capital D, depending on where you're watching the video. Then touch where it, where it finishes and you're going to go down. You touch there and you're going to go down, but you're going to go down and then join it up. So you've got to go down, join it up. It reminds me of, there's a piece of cheese and it's dripping, which is so cool. Now what you want to do is put a dot there and you're going to go around this shape. So you're going to do this. 
this is like the framing of the clock. So it's the edge of the clock. Once you've done that, we want to do the dials to make it look like it's kind of melting. So to make it look like it's melting, we want one that goes straight across. So it has to be that type of line, not that way, not that way, but this way. And then you could do an arrow, or you could do a fancy arrow like that, maybe. This is going to go straight down. I'm going to do another fancy arrow, but you can just do an arrow, a normal arrow. What I want to do is here on this side, I'm just going to wait for you because I think I've probably gone super fast. I'm, I'm used to going so fast now. I want to do the button of the, you know, a stopwatch. It's got a button or a clock or a, a watch. Ultimately, it's got a little button. So we're just going to go like that. And then it's got little lines on it. Now, we want to do the numbers because they're really important, but we can do numbers that are like melted and they do not have to make sense because that's the beauty of Salvador Dali. His work didn't make any sense. So I'm not even doing the right numbers and if I was doing it right, it would have one, two, three, and then four, isn't it? I can't think now. So we don't want to do too many numbers, there's no need. I'm just going to do a couple. What's another number I like? Seven's cool. Can you see they're kind of not, they're all a bit, oh, and this bit, we want to make them longer, like they're dripping. It's kind of cool. And on the picture, there's a little bumblebee or a fly, I think it is. I'm just going to do that now. So like little legs. And a wing. So just, just a little fly on there. You do not need to add that. And if you can't see, it's pretty much like a jacket potato with two little wings. It doesn't have to be anything. And a little face. It doesn't even have to make sense. Once we've done that, I want to do the other awesome clock. Um, before we do that, I'm going to touch this bit here. And you're going to go up. Just like that. We're doing another tree. But it's going in the distance. So it doesn't, it's not in the actual picture. But I've added it because I thought something a bit different. And we're going to do the clock now. You might want to rub out a little bit, but let's rub out at the end, shall we? So what you're going to do is you're going to do one, leave a really large gap, and do two. So you want quite a big gap between there. I would say almost your hand, depending on the size of your paper. Then we want to go down. And it's quite nice to do it a bit squiggly. Can you see, I've done almost like a U shape, but it's kind of done a bit a bit funny line, which is kind of cool. Then you just touch these bits here and you've got to do this. You're following the line. Now, once you've done that, we need to rub out in a moment, but not quite yet. Just here, you've got to do this. It's very subtle. And if you can't see it, it's just a little line. Just a little line that joins, can you see? Then we do this. Because this is the back of the clock that's folded over the um, tree. And then we're gonna do that. So there's a little stopwatch bit that belongs to that. Now all we need to do is rub out. So we're gonna get our trusty rubber and we're gonna rub out every single bit of that line. That's why, really, I could have done that line last. So I wouldn't be able to draw over my clock, but if you've just got a rubber to rub it out, then it doesn't matter, does it? Okay, can you see now that, you can still see the white line, but you can see that it's going over the tree. And we're gonna, you see now? I love that look. It's nice when you sort of rub things out and you're like, oh yeah. Okay. Now one little line to rub out and that is the tree. So we only keep the top one because it's folded over that top line. It doesn't make sense right now, don't worry. It doesn't have to really, because his paintings didn't. 
But what we're looking for is this clock's folded over. So now we need to do a handle. So we've got my one there. And we can do the numbers if you like. I love when they drip. <laughs> like little wobbly ones there. I've done it with pencil just because I didn't want to ruin my Tipex thing that I had. There we go. And you can make them into bubble writing. It looks kind of cool when there's like a big seven or something. I'm going to leave it there because if I do any more to it, I might end up never finishing it for you. But what we could do is anything like that tree is in front of the horizon line. Do you know what? I'll probably do just one little thing. And that's, there's a mountain there. I could just do it like that. So there's a mountain coming from that side. Right, let's go. What I think I might do is I might do oil pastel. Shall I do oil pastel? And do you know what? You can do anything at this point. As in you can do pastel, you can use paint. I think I'm gonna do pastel because it's a bit quicker for you to see. Right, what we need first of all is a really beautiful, which I don't have, <laughs> a beautiful light blue. This looks awesome in paint as well. So whatever you wanna use, you start using now. Okay, I would say I'm gonna do yellow first because the yellow is quite important because it needs to be bright. So paint, oil pastel, watercolour pencil, doesn't matter. Whatever you use, yellow first. There is more to this original picture. I'm doing yellow up there as well. Um, but we're not going to draw all of it today. There's no need because the biggest thing about this picture is the awesome melted clocks that look so good. So that's the... You can take as long as you like with that and plus if your teacher or your parent can look at the original you'll see that if you're painting it it'll be dark around the edges i'll try and do a bit of it for you anyway be super careful when you do the blue because you might end up smudging and going into the yellow so what i would do is put the blue on its side if you've got light blue paint do a water wash oil pastel do it light you'll still be able to see through it if you're doing what a uh, blue watercolor just do loads of chunky blue watercolour and then put water. I am going to literally do it very lightly because I do not want to do it green. So what I'm doing is I'm smudging so you still see a bit of white in the middle which I quite like. And even if you do it with pencil, you can still see, can't you? If you draw this with pencil, you can still see the lines. You can still see that. And what I quite like about chalk is you can make it different tones. So it can be light, it can be dark. It's quite cool. And you can still see through. Whatever you do, just don't touch the yellow. I think that's, that's the secret of it. <laughs> Don't touch the yellow. No to the yellow. Right, I've forgotten to do something. <laughs> so you need to do this yellow. Totally forgot. I guess this all could be yellow. It's kind of silver, but I think we might do it yellow. And then I could go over it again later on. Right, those clocks really stand out now, don't they? They look really awesome. I'm tempted to do it grey guys, so let's go over the grey, just looks like, because it's the back of the clock, that's why I'm thinking, hmm, okay, yeah it looks slightly more, more like it makes sense, not that it needs to, right, now what I would do is I would get an orange, quite a dark orange actually, and I would do this, got to be super careful doing this, so really, you could do it at the end. If you've um, painted it and let it dry, you can go over it in the end with uh, anything. I'm just doing it now because I'm doing chalk. Whoa, can you see I did a bit of a bit of a boo-boo there? Oh, 
then <laughs> put it back too soon. This might take you a while to do, but it's worth it. Definitely worth it. I'm going to get a brown for the background of this one because it's a different colour, isn't it? So I don't want to do it yellow. And all you need to do is get your one finger that's hopefully clean because you just want to you just want to draw over it basically. You're not smudging it, you're just drawing over it to smooth the edges. If you've got another material like um, watercolour, then you don't obviously have to do this, so don't worry. As long as you keep it yellow, it needs to be yellow and bright. Right, the next thing that I love doing, get a black. This black against the blue looks awesome. This doesn't have to be straight either, you could do a wobbly one, but it's kind of cool. And you're colouring it in. If you're doing this in um, paint, you could let the paint dry and then go over with a marker. It doesn't have to be chalk, remember, it's anything you like, and it doesn't have to make sense. It's supposed to be fun. Woo! Can you see how cool that looks? Bug? No. Can you see how with black everything stands out? It looks really nice. Here, I'm going to do. Woo! And a six. Oh my word, my six has gone a bit funny, hasn't it? <laughs> okay, so that's ultimately what you want to do with the clocks. We could do a little bit more, but we don't need to. Now, with this, there would, would actually be a dark blue. Can you see? I'm going to find that picture here on this one. I did dark blue because it's a different type of you know the light shine on this bit not this bit so you could do a light a dark blue i don't really think you need it it's up to you but what i might do is get a dark blue and just do a line like that and smudge a little bit as long as you don't touch the black okay i could do that bit as well really couldn't i so now you want to just draw over the black if you've got pastel but be super careful Okay, smudge that slightly, but that's fine. Okay, so now all you need to do is let's think about what colour we want this to be. I would say dark brown and a, and a light brown. So I've got kind of a ready, but that's fine. So I'm going to do, I can't remember what the picture was now. <laughs> I'm going to do a bit of dark there. So I'm going to do a shape that does this. Just looking at the picture that I did. And a bit of dark there. So all this... And you can paint this. You could literally do that in pastel and just paint the rest if you don't want to take too long on it. I'm doing these dark bits because it makes it give it gives it more form. It looks kind of cool. So there's your dark bits, and the rest is going to be this colour that I've chosen. It's like a brick colour. They're both like brick colours, aren't they? But can you see how mine's massive as well. My picture. So yours won't take as long as mine. Then we're just going to smudge away. Ah. Ah, I've got to be super careful not to touch the yellow. Ah. There we are. There we are. Right. So that just gives you a little bit of an idea of sort of the different colours and the light shining on it. Now the tree, I'm going to do a grey. So I'm going to get a grey pastel. I might just do grey on its own, just because I don't want us to be too detailed. There's no need. So I'm just going to do grey. And I'm going to outline it at the end, a bit of black. So grey's fine. I would say all of this is black. Whew, it's going to be interesting, isn't it? I'm going to have to get the black paint out, guys. So if you've got black paint, go get it. If not, don't worry. But I'm going to do this grey as well. Where's my grey gone? This may take you three hours. So it depends how simplified you do it. You could just do the clocks. You don't have to do the background. There's no need. But I'm just going to show you in case you do want to add that. 
Now I'm going to do green for my mountains. I'm just outlining it and I'm smudging it in. There you go, that's my green. Right, let's see, what did I do? So there's a, there's a sunset, but I'm going to keep it super basic. So you want a red and a yellow, any colours, as in paint or whatever you like. I'm going to just do a bit of red there. What's it going to do? Bit of red. I'm going to do super loads of yellow. Ah, love yellow in a picture because it looks so good. And I'm going to do, pause the video if I'm going too fast. It's just so you know what to do. Then I'm going to do an awesome blue. I love blue in the sky on a sunset because it just kind of looks cool. You don't generally see it necessarily, but I like the fact that this picture doesn't make sense. So it's good. So can you see as I'm smudging, the red goes into the yellow, it turns per it turns orange. There's a greeny sky. It's really awesome when you start mixing the colours. And it's okay actually, I think, to keep the line. It doesn't have to smudge in at this point. You see? I like that. That just looks really dreamy. We can smudge it more if you want, but I don't know. I quite like it as it is. It's up to you. Now, I am going to get... Woo! Oh, no. Does that ever happen to you? Your pastels fall all over the floor. I'm going to get black paint, but you don't have to. Black looks amazing with this. And all I'm going to do is this. All I'm going to do is this. Oh, make sure your black paint is not as watery as mine, guys. Because that is not going to look good. <laughs> oh. Yeah, you want really... You want thicker black, really. Do you know what? I won't do it too dark, then. I'll just... I'll just go over it so it looks like it's a little bit of a black. It's probably going to be more grey looking now. And I'll just have to go around the other bits. I like using a flat headed brush, they're really fun because you can go around all the detail and it looks really nice. And I think the secret of the day is don't put too much paint on because it's watery because it goes everywhere as you can see. But you know what, if something goes wrong it's fine because we can deal with it when this is dry, I'm going to go over some bits. So we're nearly, nearly done. If you find this a bit hard, just take your time. You can finish this as a separate project in your own time, perhaps. Or leave it and come back to it a bit later. Because it's a lot to do there, but it's so nice when it's finished. The good thing about watery paint, as we've found out, is not that it drips, but... Um, that you can draw with it really well. It's like ink, isn't it? Like my line can be like that, it's really nice. You don't have to do this in paint. You could do this in oil pastel or chalk, but I just, it would take me a long time to do it and I don't wanna take up all your time. So, this is smudged, isn't it? Look at that. So what I'm, what I'm gonna do, I'm not gonna get upset. I'm just gonna go over it. Just gotta find the right color. So I'm going to go over it so you can't really see it then. Do you know what I mean? It's not going to be too much of an issue. It's still wet, so it's a bit super tricky, isn't it? It's super tricky! No, it's not looking necessarily. There we go. Right, so ultimately, that's all you need to do. You need to do your, just go over there. You need to do all of the awesome, there we are, it's kind of cool. Just pretend that I didn't drip it. <laughs> you need to make sure that's black, any kind of black. You've got the sunset, two clocks. If you want to, moving forward. It's really bothering me now, isn't it? <laughs> if you want to, moving forward. You could literally just do two clocks and then nothing else. Um, you don't need to do any more. I am going to. Where's my grey? Hello. 
I don't know if you ever have this where you lose a grey or you lose something and you think, oh, I'm going to just do a dark a bit there. Just because that's the shadow of where it is. And I'm just going to smudge it. So that is my Salvador Dali Surreal Melting Clocks. So like I said before, if you wanted to, you could do the melty clocks in anything. You could just do this bit, nothing else, as a project. Or you could do this bit as just a project. So you don't have to do the whole thing. Um, but that's all you need to do. I am going to outline this with black and outline this with black. It kind of looks cool when you outline stuff, um, Salvador Dali pictures, because they're quite bright then, isn't it? Because everything else is kind of black anyway. You don't really need to outline some stuff. But yeah, have fun doing that. Let me know how you get on. I would say this is the hardest one, perhaps, that I've done. But you know what? Give it a go. See how you get on. Let me know what you do. And enjoy. Enjoy. That's the main thing. Enjoy what you're doing. And I shall see you tomorrow. <laughs>